Bonjour tout le monde. Hey guys, Katie up here in the academy and welcome to your online Easter revision course for sixth year higher level French. Um, you should all have your lovely set of notes that look like this in front of you and what we're going to be having a look at is the section of your notes that has day one in front of it. Um, they start on the first page of your notes which is randomly enough actually page two because apparently I still can't use Google Docs, so I apologize. And um, what we're going to be having a look at today is going to be la chronologie des temps verbaux. We're going to be looking at the timeline of your verb tenses. So regardless of things like the subjunctive or anything like that, we've got nine tenses that we need to be able to really nail for our state exams this year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work through tenses one to nine. We're going to have a chat about them in English, make sure that everyone actually understands the concept of each tense before we go into forming them, all this kind of stuff. It's just going to really try and kind of consolidate some of your main grammar points. So hopefully when you're revising them closer to the exams, you have a little bit more background knowledge of them so they make a little bit more sense, okay? So what we've got on our board over here, so again, if you're following along with your notes, this is on the first page of your notes, so page number two. And we're going to be looking at tenses one, two, and three for the next few minutes of this lesson, okay? So what we've got over here, we've got number one, you've got le plus que parfait. Alors, numéro deux, l'imparfait. Et numéro trois, le passé composé. So the first thing I'm going to tell you in English is regardless of French, regardless of English, regardless of any language, in any language, the word perfect in grammar means that that tense at some stage in its use has a relationship to the past, okay? And the reason I'm saying that to you is when I would see students trying to attempt the use of tense number one, what happens is they kind of overthink it and they don't really understand the background of it. So if we know that the word perfect, so parfait en français, means that it has a relationship to the past, if you look at what this tense actually means, it literally translates as the more than past. So this is going to try and help us, I suppose, get a better, get to better grips with this tense and understand what it is before we even look at it in French. Okay, so if you have your um, notes open in front of you, you'll see that at the beginning of each tense, I've left you a section to fill in your keyword, okay? And your keyword I'm going to give you is actually, they're all going to be in English. And again, that's just to try and help you kind of understand what the tense actually is, okay? So our keyword for the plus que parfait is the English word, had. And to give you an example of that, that would be, I had eaten too much. Before, my tummy was sore. Okay, so again, forget about the French for a second, right? If we have a look here, I've got two actions, right? I've got, I had eaten too much, and then I've got my tummy was sore. So if we look at the second part of this sentence here first, right? My tummy was sore. In English, this is the past tense of the verb to be, okay? It was. But what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to tell you what happened prior to my stomach being sore. I'm sorry, I know that's a really random, um, example to use, but it's just one of the easiest ways for you, to, for you guys to understand this whole concept, okay? So again, I've got a past action, and what I'm trying to do is tell you something that happened before this, okay? So essentially, what we're going to use the Pusca Parfait for is to discuss, discuss an action or an event or a situation or anything like that, discuss an action that happened before something else in the past. And the good thing is, if you're looking at this and you're like, absolutely no way, I really just don't understand it, it's not one of the hugely important tenses. I would so much rather you focus on the present tense, the imperfect, the passé composé, rather than look at this and spend ages and ages studying it. It's just more so that maybe if you are really pushing for a H1 or a high H2, that you could use this to differentiate your tense uses, you could differentiate your grammar using tenses like this, and also then if you see it in a comprehension, that it could help you understand more of the complex sentences in it, okay? So, how we're going to form this in French is very similar, this is like the passé composé's older brother, okay? So it's going to be really similar, so we're going to have what we call it, we call it a compound tense. And a compound tense is the same as like a compound movement in the gym. So if you went to the gym, even though they're all closed now, thanks to my new COVID, um, but if we went to the gym and we were doing, let's say a deadlift, okay? We're going to call that a compound movement because what that's gonna use, it's more than one muscle group. So if you're doing a deadlift, you're going to use your hamstrings, your glutes, your quads, your whole posterior chain, your core. So we're using more than one muscle group to do that action. So a compound tense in grammar 
is a tense of more than one part, okay? So our tenses for this, or sorry, our parts for this tense are going to be the imperfect, so the imparfait of good old avoir and être. So that's the first thing you're going to need to use. And the good thing is, when we get to the passé composé and we write down the acronym we're going to use to remember all of the verbs that take être in the past, they're all going to be the exact same for this, okay? All we need to do is change the tense that we have, what we call our auxiliary verb, so avoir être in, okay? And then the second thing then is going to be our past participle. So the exact same as the passé composé, we know that an eor verb is going to change to um, ex i vous, I or verb is going to change to the letter I, and an or e verb is going to change to the letter U, and apparently I can't write the letter U properly. Okay. So again, really quick summary, plus que parfait, the past past, so the, the more than past, sorry, very smooth, guys. The more than past, okay, so what happened before something else in the past? So it's kind of taken two steps back. Compound tense, part one is going to be the imperfect of avoir and être, so there are auxiliary verbs. They're going to tell us who is doing the action. And then this is going to tell us the actual action itself, the past participle of the other verb. So to give you an example, that would look something like, I want to say I had eaten, I would say j'avais mangé. So maybe if you even want to scribble that down, just so you have an idea of what it looks like in your notes as well. Okay, so j'avais mangé, I had eaten. So the exact same as English. Okay, now, the imparfait. So what I'm going to do is I want to actually talk about these two tenses together. So I'm going to talk about the imparfait and the passé composé as kind of, I suppose, brothers and sisters that like to fight a lot because they're always trying to fight each other for the spotlight, okay? So if you guys were here now in person, I'd be trying to make really bad jokes. I probably still will at some stage, but anyway, it's fine. But the easiest way for me to kind of differentiate between the imperfect and the passé composé is if you imagine you're in second or third year and your teacher assigns you a project, okay? And you're put in partners, you're put in, I suppose say couples, no, it's not Love Island. You're put with a partner and you are sitting there and you're dreading having to do this project with your partner because you know that they don't do anything, okay? The imparfait is like that person who doesn't really do anything, that their name will be on the project, but they don't take any action, okay? So what I would describe the imparfait as is our descriptive tense, and then the passé composé is our active tense. So this is the partner in the group who says they're going to do loads, okay? They're great at talking lots, they're great at saying, yeah, absolutely no problem, I'll get all of that sorted, I'll print it all out, blah, 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 but they don't actually take any action, they're just, they're all talk, basically. So my keyword for the imparfait, I'm just gonna write KW, my keyword is going to be description. Whereas for the passé composé, my keyword is going to be action, okay? So description, so all talk, all action. So like older brothers and sisters, younger brothers and sisters that just fight a lot and they're trying to get along and try to work together, but it just doesn't really happen. So the reason I'm saying that they're trying to work together is because you will always see the imparfait and the passé composé used alongside each other. Um, and basically, with the imparfait, what we use it for is for background information, to provide additional information to kind of set the scene, to talk about the weather in the past. But then all of this description is going to be interrupted with the action of the passé composé. So that's what I mean when, you see, when I say that you'll see them beside each other.